Hello everybody. Although clearly I've done something weird with my screen. Um, I guess as usual, let me know if you can see me, hear me, and if the sound sync seems way bizarre. I'm gonna turn this off for a sec. I'm not sure what I did. I, t I thought I messed something up, but hi Quindy. Um, I hear you've been helping uh, upload all the stuff to YouTube. Thank you very much for that. So if anyone out there has been waiting to, you know, catch some of the older stuff that, that's not on Twitch anymore, a lot of it's going up on YouTube now. So you should be able to find lots of cool Reaper content to keep you busy. All right, I will switch over to the other view, I think. So I'm hoping to get through two things today. Well, I don't think the title went out. So the title of the show is actually Krampus and Kwanzaa um, as two separate events. Um, so last week I started working on the Paint Your Krampus set that I wrote last year, but they found a bunch of copies in the warehouse. And I didn't quite get done and I, I had like a hard stop time, so I wasn't able to just go long. Um, so I'm going to try and finish that up today, but then also talk about painting dark skin, because I know that a lot of people have questions about that and find it challenging. Um, but uh, while we're waiting for uh, people to come, I'll just kind of go over the holiday stuff, which interestingly, I think pretty much everything is still available. So this is the Gingerbread Knight, who's part of the sampler, and then that also comes with um, two paint colors, Ginger Cookie and Holly Berry. These colors have been out in the past um and i just checked with ron and he said there are still some of those there are still some of the paint your krampus although i think supplies are pretty limited on this so if you were interested in this um i would probably you know run get that after the show uh and it really is a, a mini learn to paint kit so there's actually you know it, it takes you through dry brushing and washing with some example close-up pictures um and even even a little bit of non-metallic Metal. So if you have a, a friend or family member that you were kind of thinking about trying to introduce them to the hobby, this would probably be a good one. It comes with four paints, which I will get out now because I'm going to need them to finish him up. Uh, so Auburn Shadow, Palomino Gold, and Ultramarine Blue, which I talked about last week is kind of um, a less saturated version of a classic red, blue, yellow um, primary color scheme. And then also this Shield Brown. And then you need to supply your own black and white. I used uh, pure white and pure black for the, um, when I painted mine, for the, so the, the ratios and the steps, if you use a different one, you might want to check, especially for the washes, because um, these are both very pigmented colors. So if you use um, like dragon black in particular, it doesn't take a lot of thinning down to make that a wash. And this, this guy, if you uh, don't want him... In, you know, if you don't want to get a sampler or whatever, he will be available next month, is my understanding. And that's in Bones USA. And then you would also I'm gonna bump the exposure up a little more again. Maybe even a little more. If that, oh, nope, wrong thing. If this looks glaring out there to anyone, let me know. He, he is cute, and he's a lot of fun to paint. And I think I have my or four scale so you can see he's he's um decently sized and because this one's plastic you might be able to um do conversions i know people be, some people have been saying they'd actually like to have like a whole unit of these guys in different poses and stuff but that is between uh christine van Patten, who sculpted him and reaper i have nothing to do with that but i know they had one on the reaper live that i think uh, michael collins had customized so it looked like someone had bit the side of his head which is cute well, more than cute. But so that one was actually metal because this this uh, bones plastic wasn't finished when I got sent mine to paint. And then I think this is the the um, I take these back out because otherwise things are just floating around. This is the um, miniature of the month. The bones USA of the month is this hair folk person, which. I think is with purchases, you get free with purchases of $40 or more, and then you can just buy one if you want. Oops, back in the package. 
And these are the holiday paint colors for this year. So these, they are available. I don't think they're available individually, but there are triad combinations. So those two are the sampler, but there are triad combinations. So if you don't want the whole set, you can just get some of them. Uh, and then the ones with an N here, spruce green, graham cracker, toasted marshmallow, cranberry red, angelic gold, and dreidel blue are new colors this year. And I like that chocolate brown a lot. I haven't, I almost was going to use it today, but I think I'm going to do something else. Well, I'm going to have to do something else because I didn't bring it over here. Uh, so last week, as I mentioned, I was working on the Krampus. So this is the in progress one. And then this was the, when I painted the kit, I did a test as well. So Reaper has their own copy, but this is the, the test one that I painted that I still have a copy of. So we just, I think we have to finish up the horns, the barrel staves, the snow, and then little details like the eyes and teeth. Oh, and while I'm showing, this is a preview. This will be the Bones USA miniature for next month. I think he's called Noel Berserker. He might actually have like a name name, but I did. He didn't come in a package or anything, so this is all I know. But this is a very nicely sculpted figure. There's a lot of great muscle detail and stuff like that. And it's Julie Guthrie sculpted this one. Let's see. So then, so I've been kind of doing a whole holiday thing these past few weeks. So. The week before, I was working on this mistletoe goblin, and I suspect this one is still on Twitch as well. So if you've been wondering how to paint red, um, I used I used actually a slightly different, I added a few colors, um, but you can also remove a few colors and just do more mixing. So I showed how I painted uh, the one I did last year, and I painted that guy, so it was dark red and light red. I talked about matching greens. There's been, I, I don't even remember which show at this point, but there's been some, I experimented with adding white or adding yellow or adding mixtures of white and yellow to red and green for highlights because you can get um, different kinds of highlights depending on what you're looking at for which one you add. You don't always want to add white to things to make highlights. Hey, Bob and Julie. And then I think I also experimented with adding dark green, blue, and dark brown or black, dark green, black, and blue for greens, shadows. So I've been talking a lot about mixing lately. I'm gonna get started on the Krampus. I'm gonna get my beat up paper though, because I'm bound to drop water on the paper. And I forgot to set my palette up before I started, so I'm gonna have to do that for a minute. And then what I, so yesterday was the first day of Kwanzaa, uh, which I believe goes for seven days. I have do not have any authority to, to speak on the nature of the holiday itself, but since it's part of our holidays and I've been trying to, you know, tie color things in holidays, I thought it would be a good time to talk about painting dark skin. I originally thought about trying to uh, paint, I don't know how you say it, it's Kente cloth, it's K-E-N-T-E, -E. it's the, the really patterned cloth that's popular in Africa and is uh, kind of a traditional part of the celebration. And that, I did kind of a fake version of that once. You know, the easy version, I guess. So, but it's not as distinctly patterned as the real cloth. But then that seemed like a lot. Like, I, when I started looking at reference pictures of it, I was like, okay, I don't know if I could paint that sitting on my own with my highest magnification on, let alone trying to do it on the show, explaining to you guys how to do it. Um, and then I was like, well, dark skin is such a common question that would make more sense even then because I know not everybody wants to take the time to paint ridiculous freehand but everybody wants to paint different colors of skin on other people all right so let me just get my magnifier on and I will start on the graphics I'll just double check that I'm correct so yes, I had highlighted. So one thing that I was doing a little different from the instructions is that the instructions are all um, dry brushing other than the, the little non-metallic metal part, but I used layering on the skin instead of dry brushing. I see there's a little bit of missing primer there too, which I, I am gonna go ahead and since this is, my copy is metal, um, 
because I I had they sent me a few extras. They don't always do that. In fact, they hardly ever do that. Uh, but they sent me a few extras so that I could you know work out the color scheme, and I had them left over. So I thought I would do them this year when they found extras in the warehouse. But uh, that means that primer rub off is a more significant thing since it is metal. So there's I don't know if you can see there's just a li few little shiny spots. So I'm just going to add a little bit of primer in hopes that that will help the paint stick. If I get to the snow, I mean, the snow might be boring and you might rather that I skip ahead to the dark skin. So I'm, I uh, haven't read these in a while, so I have to refer to my own instructions here. So uh, the barrel hoops and staff handle. So he's also, he's got a staff made out of branches, which I knew last week what, is it birch? I'm not sure that they're birch. Um, did I say in the other thing? I'm not sure that I did. I just said it was wood. Uh, but this I painted as metal as well. So we have to make our own gray, but that's easy. And I made a blue gray. So I'm using one drop of the ultramarine, one drop of the pure white, and one drop of the pure black. And as ever, I shook my paints before the show. So you should shake them more than you see me doing on screen. Your paints, I mean. Hey, Valander. Thank you for um, subscribing. Or resubscribing, I guess is more accurate. 26 months, wow, that's quite a streak. So I don't have the palette on screen because uh, the focus seems to like it better when I don't do that. But I will try to show the color. Or at least the focus on the miniature works better if I don't have. So in fact, it, it's handy that I did the um, a little bit of gray primer because you get a comparison that it on its own, it doesn't look, well, it looks pretty blue on screen. It doesn't look as blue in person, but I don't know if my monitor might be a little off. But it will look less blue as we progress because the other steps don't involve blue as much. So hopefully everybody is enjoying the holiday season, or at least surviving the holiday season. We can't always, we can't always hope for enjoyment. It's not always a, you know, it's bittersweet for some of us, and maybe just bitter for some of us. That's why I'm doing Krampus for the people who are tired of holiday obsessions and excess. We can do the dark side of the holidays as well as the light side. Hopefully this will be fairly opaque. Maybe I'll be able to get away with one coat. I do typically like to um, do two coats of paint, whether it's a plastic or a metal miniature, to make sure that I have a good solid paint film, especially if I were going to game with the figure or handle it very much. So I know it takes a little longer, but I think it's worth it to have the sturdiness. Color is fairly opaque. I didn't get any really amazing Christmas presents they want to talk about. Hey, Dave Goodwin. Valander said last night I had the opportunity to recommend Color and Light by James Gurney to a few new painters. Excellent. That's it. Fantastic resource. Oh, there's a few more spots I rubbed off, and I can see how I'm doing it because I keep putting my thumb there. I think I must have the camera further back than usual. I will have to try to keep checking that I'm in frame. Uh, 
Ellinger said, my Christmas present was hanging out with friends on Christmas. That is what we did as well. We went over to a friend's house. And, well, we, we tend to do what we call traditionally non-traditional Christmas. So we, my husband and I live somewhere different than both of our families. Uh, so we really never do the family thing at Christmas. And we don't have kids, so we're not doing stuff with the family we created either. Um, but we have uh, some close friends, and we all like playing board games. So we usually, usually would go out to dinner at a restaurant, but given whole Omicron surge nonsense uh, we didn't want to do that and we don't every year sometimes we'll uh, get like catering stuff or am I too close maybe or uh, well I don't know if anyone ever cooks really <laughs> sometimes we'll get like this you know the take-home meal or something like that but this year my husband actually did cook because he um, He's not a cook either, and I, I mean not a cook. Like, when we were dating, he called me up to ask how he made canned corn, and I'm like, dealer's choice? Make it warm. I in trouble. Um, but, uh, so he, his mom used to make tacos in a very particular way. He actually says it's more like that hamburger that you put in a taco shell. It's not very traditional tacos. They're from Wisconsin, so it's not very traditional tacos. Uh, but he loved this Matui. So, uh, when the pandemic started, he called her up and asked her how to make these tacos. And that was his goal, was to figure out how to make the tacos. And then he wanted to share them with our friends for Christmas. So, he made up, like, two huge batches of the taco meat. And then we bought all kinds of fixings. And we brought those over to our friend's house, and we played board games. I mean, we always play board games every Christmas. The food part changes. But... And... Since we rarely are eating the things or doing the things that everybody else does, we call it traditionally non-traditional Christmas. Because that is our tradition now. I am not staying in frame. Okay, I'm going to make you guys dizzy. Just ignore for a minute, but I'm going to move the camera a little further down. All right. Apologies. I thought I had the setup all worked out, but apparently I did not. It's always something. And then I'm from Canada, so yesterday was Boxing Day. Which really... I was going to make a joke on Facebook for my friends and make up all these Boxing Day traditions. There are zero Boxing Day traditions. It's basically like how in America there's a second day after Thanksgiving and it's just like more holiday. Second Thanksgiving, shopping, whatever you want to do with it. That is kind of what Boxing Day is in Canada. Alright, so that was the base coat. Now there's going to be a wash. But let's make sure it's dry first. And I missed a little spot. But I wasn't feeling great yesterday. So I did not joke around for Boxing Day. And it was not Christmas success. It was, uh, I got a, an allergic skin reaction to, I tried a new lotion that was supposedly for sensitive skin, lies. Um, and when I get that problem, sometimes it's like, I'll be fine for a week and then all of a sudden it'll kick in and it's really bad. And it was all over my eyelids and I could feel like in the night I would wake up and I would know that I was rubbing my eyes, eyelids and stuff. So we have this like, they call it teledoc or something, that you can just call the doctor and I'm like, because I used to kind of have a standing prescription for a steroid cream, but my skin allergies hadn't been so bad for a while. So I had, didn't have the cream or the prescription. And then when I was talking to the guy, he's like, well, if it's on your eyelids, you can't really use anything stronger than over-the-counter cream. Uh, so I'll give you a prescription for steroid pills to take systemically. And like, All right, just whatever, whatever stops the itching and the pain, let's make that happen. So I am going to test this. Um, and this is the part where if you use a different black than pure black. So I did one drop of black to four drops of water. But if you use a different black, you're going to need... Um, sorry, my brush seems... 
like maybe out of a pink. If you're gonna, if you use a different black, you you might need a different amount of water. So I can still see some of the texture there. So I think that's a good level for that. And my instructions say apply sparingly because I what I I don't want it to wash all over the rest of the wood. Is the main thing here. So I'm kind of this really doing this mostly to kind of add lining the easy way. So I just want it to go to either side of the thing and not drift all over the place. If I can make that happen. So then I was taking the steroids and that they did start working pretty quickly, which I was happy about. And then yesterday I woke up and I just felt really well, it wasn't, I, it wasn't when I first woke up. It was after I took the, the pills, a few hours after I took the pills. I felt weak and kind of groggy and really tired, and I took a nap, and that didn't help. And then I was like, well, why don't I go read the side effects stuff on that sheet that they give you at the pharmacy? And I was like, oh, look at all these side effects that can be caused by steroids that I'm currently experiencing. So luckily that was my last dose. But if I had felt like that again today, I would have been like, well, I'm not going to makes sense and I'm probably going to drop a miniature all over the place so I won't do a show but luckily today I'm not I wouldn't say I'm 100% back to normal but I think that I can manage to keep holding the miniature for a couple hours so I so said let's do it all right so that will need to dry briefly I think I, I already did the wash on the horns. So yeah, let's jump ahead and do the dry brushing on the horns. And again, for those who came late, I'm doing the Paint Your Krampus kit that I wrote for last year. Uh, and I started on it last week. So if it seems like I'm in the middle, I am in the middle, but you can uh, watch on Twitch to catch up if you really wanted to do this on your own campus. And I think you can just buy him in Bones USA now. But the kit is also available. A few copies. They found them during this famous uh, cleaning of the warehouse. They found an additional little box of them or something. Kind of starts seeming like the warehouse where Indiana Jones put the Ark at the end of the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, that looks about right. And let's see, I didn't get my dry brushing. You know, apologies if there's a weird noise. I just needed a paper towel that I can do the dry brushing part on. So I'm going to make sure that this brush is dry because I think I used it to put on the primer. So if I recall correctly from last week, I am painting him as if the light is coming from this direction. So I'm trying when possible to make my dry brushing strokes from that direction to kind of reinforce the idea of the light. So you can see that the, the chest is darker Kind of on the lower left and lighter up here because I did the dry brushing that way. And the same thing with this bundle of sticks. It's lighter up here and then darker under there. The way the uh, horns are, I think that that's going to be a, like a challenging location to do that on. So I'm basically just going to try and make things look cool more than totally worry about the light. But I do want to at least keep the light more on the top and not dry brush everything up on the bottom to the same degree. I don't think I had one of my experimental brushes in mind for this activity, since it's a fairly small area. Okay. 
I was kind of surprised we went to the grocery store and we had to do it kind of Christmas Eve because we wanted to have like fresh tomatoes and stuff. So we didn't can buy all the stuff in advance for the tacos. And I figured, well, okay, we shouldn't have to worry about the stuff we're buying because we're not trying to buy gravy and green beans and whatever. We're trying to buy taco shells and cheese and stuff like that. Well, okay, every every part of Christmas needs cheese probably. But to my surprise, a lot of the Mexican foods were in lower stock, especially the, we, we decided we'd get some like tortilla chips just in salsa and stuff, just in case people wanted to nibble or have that along with their tacos. And like, they were down to three bags of tortilla chips when we got there. I think we got the last bottle of taco sauce too. All right, so that was with two drops of Palomino Gold and one drop of Shield Brown, which was the starting color, and then I had applied a wash over that. So now to start the highlighting, I'm gonna add one more drop of Palomino. And since I didn't use a lot of that paint, I'm gonna apply it directly to the mix I made before. And I, I don't always, um, in fact, it's not always good to dry brush on a wet palette, but since I have limited desk space and I will be using the wet palette if I do, you know, when we get to the dark skin, I'm just going with that. But a foam plate or an old tile or something like that are all great palettes for dry brushing. Since this is a highlight, I do want to think a little more about where I'm putting it. I'm not trying to like reestablish a color after a wash. Now I am working on areas that should appear lighter. So I don't want to just put it everywhere. The light were coming from here, this whole side would be getting a lot of light. So, working on that. This is a weird shape to dry brush. Perhaps I should have done layering instead. But I am planning to keep this guy and then sometimes next, sometime next year do a show like I've done a couple in the past where I take a figure and show, okay, how would you upgrade it? And I'm gonna use him for an example of that. Hey, Rings Raccoon, you're not very late. I'm just trying to finish up Krampus so that I can talk about painting dark skin because today is the second day of Kwanzaa and I thought that would fit in well with our painting colors that go with holidays. Motif that I've been doing for the past month or so. Krampus is love. Well, I'm sure some of us are feeling a little more Krampus than Kringle by this point. So. Although actually, I, I will admit, as an introvert, the, the pandemic holidays are not like a totally bad thing. I am not worn out the way that I normally would be by now. From the constant festiving I like seeing my friends a lot over the holidays, but it's uh, going from, you know, you pretty much go from Thanksgiving to January 2nd, and it's like, that's a lot. It's a lot for my poor little introvert battery. Because you always end up with the stuff you don't want to do too, like you got to go to somebody's work party or something like that. All right, so that is the Krampus horns as directed on the instructions. And now I'm gonna do the quickie non-metallic metal bit. Okay, well first I'm gonna find something I dropped on the floor. Then I'm gonna do the quickie non-metallic metal bit. 
So that was the one dilemma I had with this. I had four colors and I didn't want to waste a metallic on such a small, you know, it's really such a small percentage of the figure. So I was like, all right, you know what? We're just going to do non-metallic metal. Try and um, get people less nervous about that. And it does, it has a little example in here. So it, it shows the um, layers and then kind of the a close-up version of how I apply that. So it's really quite rough. Just starting with the base coat color. Rings agrees that the last two holidays have been better on his nerves. Done. Yes, so I'm painting a strip of the base color, so I put the black wash over it. On the center and so in this case I'm actually going to move it just a little bit this direction of the center because I'm painting the light oh, no, hold on this be a better way to do that I'm painting the light is coming from this direction so I'm not going to do it dead center I'm going to move it over just a little so that it um, meshes with the light that I've painted on the rest of the figure and this one you know was like the first step so a little wider is fine. Just trying to make sure I get that top rim a little bit. Kuroniko, hey! And we're hoping that everyone had a fantastic Christmas, which rings did. I went splat says Christmas is a big time for tamales and salsa. Ah, all right. So that's where we went wrong, I guess. Although it was, I mean, it was pretty good. I think we would do that again. I would just make sure that we have all the, the non-perishables like the chips and the salsa and stuff well before the holiday. And then, so we're just running in for like the tomatoes and the other things like that. Layer two, mix two drops of white and one drop water into the base coat mix and paint a smaller stripe inside the first one. All right. my water in a little dropper bottle that I need to refill but you can also the, the trick I discovered when I made the first one to pink it is if you put your brush handle in a in the water you can make a drop that way too then you need to match the size of your paint drops to that drop. If you have the water in the dropper bottle, it's easier to match the water to the paint. But when you do the handle thing, it's easier to do it the other way. All right, so now I need to paint that in the middle and I don't wanna go past, you know, I need to leave some of that previous color showing on all sides. Or it will look like I'm going straight from you know, a pretty dark color that I have black painted over for this lighter color. So I just want to get that top edge. And then one more layer. It's two more drops of white. smaller stripe. It's kind of like the reflection thing. I want to try to paint it a little more towards the top. So for myself, I would not um, probably have thinned the paint down quite as much. Well, it wasn't thinned down a lot. And I would probably go higher and stuff, but I thought that was an accessible uh, level of non-metallic metal. But now I realize I've done the classic thing where I did not paint this thing at all. So I'm just going to make like a tiny smidge of my 
starting point and work on the handle for his sticks. I don't know if you guys do that all the time, but I do that all the time. That's one reason I like to now paint more with um, all of my colors mixed up. So when I realize that I've forgotten a section, it's really easy to go fix it. But it also makes it easy to go back and forth. And this, if you had a small brush, is fine with dry brushing too. I just already had this brush out, so I'm just going to stay with it for now. Just try to keep this highlight color to a fairly small so like it doesn't even have to go in every paint kit. Just focus on where the light's coming from. Call that good. Alright, so actually I should start base coating the base because that will take more than one coat because I'm just painting white and while white is a fairly opaque color and that's probably why it gets streaky it's also you know gonna have to cover over some pretty dark color right there and I guarantee that will take multiple coats hopefully work on the details while that dries, although as we discovered at the beginning of the show, that is the part I keep touching with my fingers when I'm bracing. That's why I put some primer back on. So it's hard for you to see under his body where I'm, but really all I'm doing is just covering up where I was messy with the first part. Which I guess is why it's worth taking the time to not be messy. Also, you will improve your brush control, but I tend to be messy in the early stages and then fix it later. that's not glaring out on your screen. Now let's find out what I said to do for the details. Paint white onto the tips of the canine teeth. Get a little brush. Those. 
and they do protrude a good way out from the side. So it's worth moving the figure around sometimes when you're painting little details like that to see if they look right from all the directions. I believe I just painted the eyes black and I did a dot of white reflection. I guess it might be interesting if they were the blue and then the might stick out a little more. But perhaps this is something we could experiment with in the editing the figure show. Oops, I got. Let's see if my trick works. Because I made a mistake that you guys probably noticed earlier. And I didn't. Now I'm making another mistake. Maybe I'm still a little shakier than I think I am. On this chair, right? Alright, so he has a big blob of white on his knee. But I had my, I had my scrub brush, and now I can't find it. There it is. So this is an old brush that I cut down. I mean, I cut that down when I, like within a year of when I first started painting. And if you get to paint soon enough, I'm just damping it with water from my rinse water. And since I painted all of this part last week, the paint should be fairly sturdy. Even though I did not notice that for a little while. Should be able to get it off. And if there's a part where it doesn't come off, I should be able to just touch that up with black. It'll be fine. So don't panic with acrylic paint. You can always paint with it. got any black in this eye. Ended up having to wipe off a bunch there. Double check his teeth for you know he's if he's getting on children for being bad, he probably has good tooth hygiene, right? That's one of the things that kids are doing wrong. And is the base remotely dry? It's not really. Excess paint out of the pool. And then check on the knee. I think I do need to just add a little bit of black back on the knee. We get a lot of it off though. If that hadn't been white, I probably would have. Ring says it's amazing how good chewing on bones is for the teeth. Yep, he keeps them sharp and shiny. All right, I will let him dry for a minute and talk about dark skin. So, hold on. I was having some weird problem with my slideshows. So my husband was trying to help beforehand, so now I have three slideshows for some reason. But, uh, so I went to Unsplash. There's a few different sites that I go for pictures that you're able to use uh, freely. If you're just looking for your own reference, you can just do Google searches. I just try to be scrupulous about getting things that it's okay if I show them on screen and stuff. So there are a variety of different kinds of, you know, shades of dark skin, just as there are of lighter skin. You get warmer ones. Um, hold on, what's it doing now? Well, in theory, there are. He told me he faced it. All right. Let's 
see if it will do it on its own. No. Well, maybe we're just painting this lady then because I don't seem to be able to get to the other sides. I will um, try. So this one is paintings that I've done. Um, so these aren't photos. These are paintings. Uh, but they're done from photos. And you can see that this, this person has quite a cool skin tone. You can almost kind of see like blues and purples in the in the shadows. And then this person is standing out in the sun and it's quite a warm skin tone, so it's a lot more golden. But there's actually a lot of blues and purples in the shadows too. So it often works well if you have um, warmer colors in the shadows and then lighter colors in the highlights or you do, or cooler colors in the highlights or you do the reverse. You have cooler shadows and then um, warmer highlights. So I was going to see if I could try and do a version of both, but there, I don't know if there'll be time for that, but we'll see. So this one is, I used a lot of real color in the skin, but because I was layering it over and over, um, it ends up looking like a realistic skin color. But if you zoomed in, you would see in the shadows like magenta and purple, and there's some places where the reflected light is pretty blue. Um, and you can, you can bring some of that into miniatures. So that one was another cooler skin tone, and then this is another warmer one. But let's see if I can go back to the pictures of real people and get that working. And no. Um, all right, well, uh, it is worth looking at references. I guess I'll just say that. And you can also, um, I didn't bother doing that for these. I have done this in the past when I first was, was painting, uh, did a first study of dark skin a few years ago and I, I should do it again. I just, you know, I didn't have time to do all of this before the show. But uh, the reference pictures I found then, I found a very cool one, which partly was lighting, I think. So lighting can have a big effect on it too. Uh, but it almost looked purple on the highlights. And that was this fellow that I ended up using those colors on. And then there was a female figure that I painted that I did with a super warm dark skin tone. But that one was a commission miniature, so I don't have it to show. And I'm sad that I can't get to my photos because I there was a nice mix of um, different values of darkness, but also uh, the warm and cool thing. But the main thing I wanted you to see from the pictures. So if you're, if you have your phone and you just want to do a Google search for like African American man, African American woman, um, the highlights are what you need, really, to make the skin look good. You do have to go up in highlights, but you have to keep them as small as you can in some places so that you have an overall area that's dark skin but um, the highlights are what's going to bring out the forms and stuff so that is the trick um, recently on my blog I talked about the opposite I talked about where to shade skin well where to shade skin is pertinent to every skin color but I was particularly focusing on lighter skin because that's that's kind of the reverse challenge and people have just as much problems and reluctance with that is they don't want to put very dark shadows on light skin, but it adds a lot of depth and interest and um, characterization and you can do similar stuff where I was talking about using the different colors and whatnot. Um, so it's got a guide to where you actually put the shadows, but it has some photos and uh, reference of why skin has more contrast than you probably think it does. Well, it's partly the same reason why everything has more contrast than you think it does. People who say they like low contrast, um, I don't think they're looking at life very closely. And then there's also the factor that a lot of times if you're looking at um, like photos that are ads of models or something like that, or even if you're looking at pictures that you've taken in a school or an office or a well-lit home, it's very even diffuse lighting. But if you're talking about painting fantasy characters, they're out under the sun or they're in a dungeon with a torch or they're in a tavern with a fireplace. There's a lot more directional light. There's a lot more um, contrast between 
places that are being lit and places that are being shadowed on those figures. So people who like lower contrast are painting characters that look like they're in sitcoms. So it's that flat, even lighting so that wherever the camera is, you're going to be able to see the character, but there's nothing dramatic or interesting about it. And I mean, I'm not dissing sitcoms. I love sitcoms. Um, but if you compare that to, you know, your favorite movies, cinematic type movies, or even dramatic television shows, the, um, the way they use the lighting really contributes to the mood and the characterization and all of that kind of stuff. And the more you do that in a miniature, the more exciting your miniatures are going to look in comparison. If that makes sense. It makes me way more sense in the blog post. So go look at the blog post. But I also um, have a lot of examples from a guy who repaints uh, celebrity Barbie dolls and similar. So they're sculpted really well. They're sculpted in the likeness of the person. But you can't always tell that from the factory paint. And he repaints them so they look very, very realistic and natural and like the people that they actually are. And if you look at, you compare the before and after, a lot of what he's doing is just adding shadows. All right, so I was trying to figure out what to paint some dark skin examples on. So this guy would be great, um, but he has a lot of skin. I, I would not be able to finish that in the time of the show. I also only have one of him, I think. I mean, maybe I have another one, but I couldn't find him. Um, I think she would work well. Uh, oftentimes the thing that will make a character more challenging to portray as um, someone of African heritage is the hair. But uh, to me, it looks like her hair could, you could make that look like straightened hair instead of, um, you know, fine texture Caucasian hair. And this guy, I felt his hair could look like twists or something like that. But the other reason I looked at him is if you look at the size of the faces, and this is true of a lot of, that's, that's one reason I put a gnome in the um, layer up, learn to pink it, is her face is actually pretty large in proportion to some others. So I kind of thought that this face would show better on camera. So I'm leaning to doing him. If you'd really, I'd rather do the princess lady, uh, let me know. Or maybe I can do one of each. I, I don't know if it would be nicer to have a comparison of two different skin colors on the same figure or on two different figures. I went splat, said I read your recent Facebook post with a discussion on contrast. It was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I did go on to, uh, about it again. Um, but really what I was in my latest one, what I'm trying to talk about, and this, this is how that you think there's less contrast than there is thing happens, but it's not just with contrast that it happens. Um, so we kind of have two modes of thinking. Well, we probably have more than two. People refer to the left brain and the right brain, particularly art thing, because there was that book drawing on the right side of the brain. Um, and the problem is that your, your left brain is normally the one running the show. And it thinks about things in a very particular way. It's trying to answer questions. It's trying to solve problems. It's not great at observing life in a very accurate way. So you're getting that information. You are observing life and reference photos and stuff like that in an accurate way. You just aren't easily able to access that information. Um, and so a lot of what the drawing on the right side of the brain book is it exercises that get that part of your analytical brain out of the equation so that you can access what you're actually observing and draw more accurately. Um, but it also applies to painting and well, I'll even use this guy as an example. So when we talk about blonde hair and you'll see people who are beginning to paint miniatures do this sometimes, they will paint this like literally yellow because we call blonde hair gold and flax and, and a lot of other terms that mean yellow. But if I painted that on his head, it would not look realistic. If you get pictures of a person with blonde hair and you do the eyedropper thing where you pull out what the colors are or if we imagine her shirt as his hair instead. I mean, it's a, that's actually not an unnatural yellow, so that might work. Um, but if you pull, you know, get the eyedropper and pull out colors, you'll see a lot of colors that look like skin colors. Um, not 
super yellow. Like you'll get a few colors that have their creamy yellow or something like that, but you won't get like yellow. You won't get this if you sample blonde hair colors. Kriniko says, I love that Giselle miniature. It was a ton of fun to paint. It really took me out of my comfort zone, but in a good way. Yeah, I love that sculpt. That's why I have a few of them. When we were at ReaperCon, um, well, it was after ReaperCon, they were showing some of the artists, the sculptors in particular, how the um, USA Bones casting machine works. And this was one of the figures that uh, they ran to do the demonstration. So I, I just grabbed a few to have to demo for you guys. If you do some cloth or something like that that will be a good one so because we're talking about browns and this is true of lighter color skins too so there are reaper has a lot of great skin color paints but there are a lot of browns that are not intended for skin colors that also work fine so i grabbed this miniature hide i thought that looked nice for a warm one ebony flesh is from the bones line and it's really nice windy brown is from the pathfinder line so i just grabbed a bunch on a whim so i will start with a fairly if you want the so vote type one if you would rather see the uh, cool color demonstration first and two if you would rather see a warm color skin because i might not make it to both so this way we'll at least get whichever one the people in the chat would prefer to see the most but i'm just gonna i'll paint a fairly dark skin and i'll go with the ebony Either way, because it's it's what I'm going to add for highlights and shadows that's going to make the difference. So I'll just start working on a base coat while you guys vote. I keep losing my paintbrushes. So far it looks like Cool is in the lead, but I will give it a few more minutes because I know there's a delay between when I say things and when you guys get to respond. And I'm just gonna do the face, I won't do the arms and stuff. One of these figures has a problem with it, that's why I have so many of these. Um, so I grabbed a pack, when we were at ReaperCon, Ron wanted these guys painted up, so I grabbed a pack off the shelf, and then I got home, and the, uh, the one guy was fine, but this guy, I'm not even sure where it was, one of, there was a problem somewhere on it. it. Might not be this one, it might be the other one. So then I ordered another pack and then hilariously it didn't have chop and grub. It just had chop and chop. So I ended up with three chops, but I am now working on the other halfling brother as well. So I finally finished this guy. He's still on here in case I add some weathering or something else to make him go with his brother. But I have started on grub finally. And then the other thing I'm working on right now I can't show. So I won't but I'll just start letting this dry. So far, it's still, we've still got one in the lead for uh, cool color skin. Now I think I need to do a wash for my snow on Krampus, because then that's gonna have to dry. So the wash was one drop ultramarine blue, one drop black, and eight drops water. Because that's the problem when you're working with limited colors, is sometimes you have to mix he just does not want to stand up right. Well, it is what it is. All right, now I have to do a bunch of counting. I'm going to try and make small drops. Since I don't need a terribly huge amount of this. Um, I guess I should ask you, do you guys find it challenging to paint darker skin or is there some other kind of skin color that you find challenging to paint? I find very light skin actually fairly challenging as well. I don't, some people like to start a little lighter than, or even make paler people than I would make. I don't think I do super pale people most of the time, but there my trick is... Uh, either ashen brown or saddle brown because I think the the challenge with super pale skin 
is so many of the shadow colors are going to be more saturated than the actual skin colors. So the shadows are going to kind of come out towards the viewer in a way that they should, and that's why it looks weird. The challenge with darker skin is pushing yourself to do the contrast and then trying to keep it, keep those lighter parts confined to a small enough area that it doesn't dilute the idea of it being darker skin. Karina Cole finds painting any skin stressful. So you like painting mechs and guys in full armor and all of that? Is that, is that your solution to that problem? Uh, and Rings Raccoon says, the extremes are hard, Irish pale and African ivory. So that will take a minute to dry. And I bet this will take a minute to dry. But I may... Just go ahead and use the hair dryer to speed that up. I kind of missed a little spot here. And so although this is very dark and that is the there are some things that are really challenging to show on screen um, because the colors don't show up right. And I believe this is one of those things. Now I've lost my Ebony Black. There, so Ebony Flesh, um, I think in the swatch at least you can kind of see that it's not really black. It goes all the way to black. There is a value difference between those two. Uh, but I do want to go darker in the shadows and because um, We're gonna do the cool skin. I want to go warm in the shadows and I haven't messed around with this much actually this might fail and then I'll just go back over it with um, A cool color uh, So this is I mean this is a little light up I wanted to use so Reaper had red liner and then red shadow and I think both of those got cancelled And I was kind of like the darkest red in the in the lines um, but this red brick, it's a little purpley, so it's a little cool, but it's, purple can kind of go either way, really. Um, so I'm going to try, I'm going to try this, and I'll just mix a little bit of something else into it. What will I mix into it? Maybe I'll just mix black, actually. Kuroniko says, mostly just monsters and people in armor. Well, if you keep at it, you'll you'll get better at this game thing, I promise. So these parts, I guess, are just going to look like me putting dark on even darker. So that might be kind of weird, but... Yeah, I don't know that I... Oh, I mixed it in the wrong thing. That's why it looks weird. There's the red and the black. But then I'd have to get up my ebony again because I kind of. So it's it's a bit. More, it's actually not totally dissimilar from the red brick, um, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I can always mess around more in the shadows later if I feel like it. Which I usually do. I will call it dry enough.
All right, so now let's look at what colors I picked out for cool. Hold on, I think I see. Eh, it won't show when we do the dry brushing. Let's see it, what colors I picked out for doing cool highlights on the skin. And I actually have Saddle Brown for that as well. So I'll zoom out a bit, get the ebony back. So this is Rutarki Flesh uh, Volcano Brown is kind of similar. Uh, also discontinued, but a nice kind of cool purpley brown. That You can see that this is a little warmer then. I probably would use this on the warmer one. And the Mwangi is a lot warmer than those. So I'm going to use kind of colors like this. And then if I need to go up lighter still, um, I'll just mix in a, a cooler pale flesh. And then for the warm version, I also had like a golden brown and a, a light flesh color that has more orange in it if I want to mix in for brighter highlights. And Reaper, of course, has, there's dark skin, dark skin shadow, and dark skin highlight. Um, I like them, but I don't love them. I'm not sure why. I just never really did love those colors that much. Um, but since they're already labeled, and you can figure those ones out on your own, I thought it would be more interesting if I picked out different colors for it. All of my paints are very oozy. It's like they went on a plane trip without me or something. So more of the saddle brown. So this is the same one of the same colors that I would use to like shade a pale skin like that. Or maybe closer to this one. Yeah, this one. This is so orangey that I might use something a little different. Um, because it's just it's not totally desaturated, but it's softly saturated, I guess, maybe. It doesn't go funky in the shadows, because pale skin can go pretty funky in the shadows if there's kind of hints of other colors in your shades. One thing that, you know, if I'm, if I'm painting and I'm trying to make something look super amazing, I do more mixes in between, but I'm going to see if I can not go crazy just to try to get this done in a more timely fashion. So I can see a bit of streaks um, where I've started to apply these highlights. I actually tend to find that that first, the first couple of highlights where you're, where you're changing from the mid-tone are the ones that, if they're closer, that makes it easier to get things smoother. After a while, um, you know, as you start getting up to the lighter ones and there are really small spaces, the jumps aren't going to be very noticeable to the naked eye. They are sometimes noticeable to the camera eye. And now I'm actually just trying to take these down in size a little, because even though I said that thing about, you know, you got to paint the highlights small, I'm trying to smooth it a little and take them down in size just a little, on the head at least. He's got pretty prominently, prominent and nicely sculpted ears. So I'll zoom in. Ears often have, um, ears are often fairly red, at least on Caucasian people, but that would go against, you know, kind of the cool skin vibe. So I'm not going to change that at this time, at least. 
I'm sad that my pictures didn't work because there were some really nice pictures of highlights on people's skin. I don't know what's going on with that slideshow thing because I, I use that for weeks and it um, was working fine. And then last week I did something and it just went all wonky. Rings Raccoon, I find the dark shadows in the flesh triads are too light or the mid-tones and highlights are too close. Depends on the triad. I kind of think of them, you know, the original set from the MSP core as just kind of one continuous uh, value range. And it's just where I'm starting and then I go up until I think there's enough highlights and I go down until there are enough shadows. Um, I mean, I, I don't always paint with that, but when I look at that set, it's... Each individual triad is not going to be enough. But this is true of some of the triads in the other colors, too. Anne's been talking on her um, Patreon about using pentads, so using sets of five instead. And I would probably do that as a minimum myself, too. I don't mean with skin colors particularly. She's actually been talking about, like, greens and reds and other colors. So that first highlight was the Rube Turkey Flesh. Now I'm going with the Sow Brown. And then I'm going to have to mix a little because I didn't... It's not really in between ones that I liked for a cool color scheme. And I'm going to try to be very restrained in where I put But I often do this with dark colors, um, certainly when painting black. And if I'm painting black where I'm trying to do like shiny patent leather or something where I'm really, you know, I'm going up to white or near white. I go up and then I come back down and the coming back down is to smooth things out and tighten up the highlights as much as I can. So it's a slightly, it is a slightly different process than what I would do for other colors. Because keeping the highlights tight and getting them nicely blended uh, when you're doing extremes is definitely, I'm not gonna lie to you, it can be challenging, but it is worth doing. And it's worth even not, not doing nice blending. I mean, especially if you're doing tabletop, it's better to have the contrast and not worry about the blending than to worry about the blending. So it's interesting that one cheek on camera, that one cheek really seems to stick out more than the other, but I didn't think I was anything that different. I'll put a slim highlight here, and it may be that what I need to do is take down the other cheek a little. It's so weird, it doesn't look different to my eye. All right, I'm gonna come back in and just try to tighten this up a little. And now I have to mix a little. So yeah, if you haven't uh, been following Anne's Patreon, and she talks a lot about colors to use with colors. So if that, in the, in the Reaper line specifically. So if that is of interest to you, you might want to check out her Patreon. It's not the only thing she talks about, but she does answer a lot of paint and color related questions, which is why I am a member because I always like learning more things about the paint. So now I'm really trying to tighten up and keep them to a smaller area. He's got kind of a, I guess he's got an underbite, no, an overbite, underbite. So his chin is not, normally I would be highlighting the chin more. Um, let's see if I have another guy. Yeah, his brother's got a little more prominent of a chin. So normally the chin um, protrudes slightly and I don't highlight it up as light as you know, like especially on this girl, the top of the forehead and that upper cheek. 
or that the cheek that's facing upwards are getting a lot more light. Um, but I do still highlight the chin, but this guy's chin seems kind of recessed under his lip, so I'm not highlighting a lot. Um, I was, I actually was hoping to find another one of these figures and I would have painted on that again. Um, this is a figure that I used as a, I don't use that as a demo, but I show it in, in, in person classes about, um, layering for the skirt, but I guess somewhere along the line, she had an adventure, um, and to fix this chip, I need to fill in the hole as well as, you know, matching the paint colors and stuff. And I need to remember what paint colors I used for her. It looks like there's a chip on her hair as well. But I thought since it had been a good few years since I painted this, it would be interesting to paint her again the way I would now kind of thing. But alas, when I went looking through my figures, because almost anything that I've used in a class, I usually end up with an extra copy of. But it seems like that one, I did not. That is a Dark Sword figure, by the way. But Dark Sword and Reaper like each other, and it was all Reaper paint, so. I still, if I do find another copy, it might be fun to do the comparison on stream one time. So hopefully a bit of that is coming out. Now, I mean, it just as if I was painting any other color skin, it, it looks weird because some of the details aren't in there yet and it's going to look weirder because if I wear a light skin, some of the details would be picked out in darker colors and you would have a sense of them already. He has kind of closed eyes. One little bit more. I'm not going to hit the lip again. I don't know if the resolution on my camera is good enough for this to look like anything, but hopefully. So I don't know if that helps answer some questions you might have about painting dark skin. Oh, a little sad cat has come to say hello, it looks like. Come here, kitty. What's up? You want to come say hello? Gotta come closer so I can pick you up. No? Come here. Everybody loves you. Hi. Hi. Come here. Here she is. And I could probably dry brush snow around a kitty. Yeah. I know you want to put your tail on the paint. You live for it. Wait, hi everybody. I don't know if you can hear her purring. She's purring away. She can purr and make the sad noise at the same time. That's her special talent. I'm not sure if she's actually sad or she just makes a sad noise too. I think she's just making a sad noise. You're not sad very often, are you? You're the happy kitty. Especially now that we turn the heating pad on for you. That's your favorite thing ever. Okay, but we have to try not to bump Krampus with our tail. How about that? Nope, we do not agree to any of that. All right. And then the base is really kind of just a question of dry brushing it until it's as white as you want it. I 
I said I was dry brushing them that day. No? Okay, you want to help? You're a helper. She does think she's a helper. She thinks she's the helpiest cat ever. And she has like two weird psychic powers. She can tell when you're about to um, use whipped cream. You know, the whipped cream in the sprayer. Before you spritz, she knows. She shows up in the... Sometimes even before you get it out of the fridge, she knows. And then the other thing that she somehow senses in a way that I have not yet determined is when we're changing the sheets on the bed. So not making the bed, she doesn't care about that. But when it's sheet changing day, she is up on that bottom sheet before you can get it off. And I'm like, it's a very quiet activity. I don't see how you know. But she just knows. She is very helpful. She will sit like this for hours if I let her. Unfortunately, I can't usually paint with her this way because the tail always is going to go. I don't think she even has any idea what her tail is doing at any given time. I think it has its own separate lifestyle. Hi. <laughs> really? Really? Okay. Um, and she won't sit in a lap. So it's, it's like this or nothing for her. I have all these little scratches and puncture marks on the back of my shoulder. From holding the kitty. But that's okay because she's worth it. You're gonna flip it, you're gonna flip your tail. I know I'm not sitting exactly the way you want because I'm trying to show things for people. Okay. I think I'm supposed to lean back. <laughs> I know there are people who manage to paint with their cats. In, in the vicinity, and I'm not sure how they do it. I feel like I forgot one part of Krampus. Oh yeah, there's a little thing where you can pick out his hooves. Which I don't know if that is a tail friendly activity. Let's give it a shot. You're helping again, baby. Kriniko says, my 15 pound cat has recently decided that he is a shoulder kitty and makes painting challenging. Yes. Luckily our heavy cat does not try to sit like this or I would probably need more back treatment than I already do. And Ring says, I can't. My cats know not to bother me when I work. They're, mine are pretty good. They don't go on the desk or anything. Um, but this this kitty, if she wants affection, it's going to happen. So I just stop and, and do this for like 10 minutes. And then she'll usually decide she's okay and goes away. But she's such a sweet, not demanding. Well, I mean, she's a little bit demanding sometimes. But she's a very sweet kitty. She's not troublesome. She doesn't get into things. Um, she just she just wants what she wants. I don't know if you got if you guys are all familiar with the Jorts story. I think she's kind of a Jorts cat. She's she's not the brightest. She's never gonna figure a bunch of things out and world domination or whatever. She's not one of those kitties. So I try to do the things that that she really cares about. Since she's such a sweetheart. Well, honestly, we let the other guy who is smart get his way. But we will say no to him sometimes when he's just being a big pain in the butt for no reason other than to be a big pain in the butt or try and get stuff. He's always angling for the snacks. All right, I don't want to get paint on you, Susie. I know that you are a mostly gray cat, so if we got black and white on you, it probably wouldn't show that much. But... Hello. I'm really surprised she hasn't 
decided that I'm not doing it right and left by now. It's so warm she's not glued to the heating pad today. This cat believes that we're all going to die when it's uh, any colder than 70 degrees. Oops, I think I just went in the wrong color for the base ram. The challenge of trying to do multiple projects on the palette at once. Do you want, oh no, you can't go down that way, baby. You gotta go down this way. There you go. She hasn't come to say hi to you guys for a while now because she's been too cold. Hub's part was just to, well first I'm going to clean up the black just in case. I got stuff on it, which I think I did. The hooves part is just picking out the cleft a little. Just mixing a little bit of black and white. <sighs> That's a cute little um, kitty emoji or shadow. is Krampus. I'll compare him to the original Krampus. Although this is not the um, one that there are photographs, that the photographs from the book are from. So I think I might have darkened the mix a little to make him a bit more dramatic in the fur. And I did change the horns to a bit more yellow, I think. But there are still a few of these left if you want to get one. Krampus is still left. Well, there's a lot of Krampuses left. You can get all the Krampus you want. He's in Bones USA. But if you want the actual kit with the paints and everything. And this is a nice set of paints. You can mix. Um, it, it's not pertinent to snowy Krampus, but you can mix some nice greens from these colors as well. And some other stuff. So it's shield brown, auburn shadow, ultramarine blue, and palomino gold. And this is kind of um, earth tones. Now, Reaper made and made us some in the last Kickstarter, but they weren't available when I did this. So the yellow oxide, the red oxide, I think, would you could sub those and get something pretty similar. You might have to play with the mixes a little. But let's check on my dark skin guy. See if I have something I could do a tooth color with. Because now I have a very limited selection of paints over here. I keep meaning to kind of put together a set to have over here, but then a lot of colors I do need them for like other projects. Like right before I started the show, I cleaned up my desk and I had, um, you know, two different little project packs. I had to pull some colors off of those and I'm going to have to put some colors back. So I don't know if I'm just going to have to order a few extra paints so that I can have like a basic set here when people ask me questions or I want to talk about something that I didn't plan to talk about in advance since my room is arranged in a weird way and all the paints are completely opposite from where I am. But hey, I'm not going to complain. I've got a pretty big working area and studio and stuff. So 
I don't know that this is quite a tooth color, but I'm just give it a shot. And I would probably still add some pink or red or something to the skin colors to get a lip tone. Where was that red that I had? I mean, with male characters, I don't like to go too pink in the, the lips if I'm trying to make them look more masculine. I mean, that's gonna depend on the character. But I will often use browns or like shadow colors that I used. Unfortunately, we can't look at our reference pictures, or I could just uh, figure out some colors from people's actual skin. That is kind of annoying. I have to get my husband to send some time to figure out what happened there. Hopefully that helps bring the face together a little more. He has such tiny eyes that I think I'm setting myself up for failure here. So I did not use pure white on the eyes and pretty much never do. But I don't know if I went a little too, a little too dark. color. You get this, the vampire pallor. Um, because it's got a little green, I think it might stand out nicely from the skin color. Uh, Anne has recommended in the past using like ghost white if you've got really tiny eyes to help them stand out a little more. question would be whether I can get any sort of people in there, but let's find out. I think it will help put this skin in context. So that we get more features. So yeah, I think that makes it a little easier to see. And now I debate whether I want to hide even more. I think I'm. Now I kind of I kind of slipped and overdid it, but that's fine because I will show you what I meant about going back down. Just gonna pretend he has a little bit of vision. Just gonna be trying to work the edges of the highlights back in and shrink them up a little to make it smoother blending. 
and keeping the brighter parts confined to a small area. Which, I won't lie, is a little tough because I'm using like my not best goggles and I'm holding it where you can see. Oh, can you even see because my thing froze. Does that look terrible on screen? Wow. Well, it is tree K with the extremes. I swear that it can be done. 